Rules, rules, rules. Moms sure do love dishing them out, don't they? I'm Nicole, by the way. And you see, my parents divorced when I was eight, so since then, it's just been me and mom. Mom laid down a bunch of boring rules for me, but I hate following them. I'm 18, and I should be out having fun, right? To me, rules were made to be broken anyway. And trust me, I broke them. Only, this led to my whole life changing. One day, I had an important math test, but I hate math. So, I skipped school and went to the movies with my friends instead. I mean, hello? The last Avengers movie had just come out. No way was I missing it and getting spoilers. Maybe mom would give me a detention for a few weeks, but it's no big deal, right? I arrived home to find mom waiting for me. She glared at me and said, Nicole, I received an interesting phone call from the school. It turns out you haven't been there all day. So, where have you been? Oh no, busted! I just shrugged and replied, Out! It's those friends of yours, isn't it? They are a bad influence. I walked off to my room. Nicole, come back here and talk! She shouted after me, but I ignored her. Then she yelled out, I can't stand you and your childish attitude anymore. You're going to live with your dad. What? She was kicking me out. Wow, I didn't expect her to do that. Whatever, I was sick of being moaned at all the time. Surely dad would be far more understanding. I hadn't seen dad all that much. In fact, the last time was, um... I think it was my 16th birthday. He was a busy man, as he's the principal at this snooty boy school. And mom wasn't kidding. She called him up, and that evening, he showed up and loaded my stuff into the trunk of his car. It felt super awkward. I had no idea what to say to him. Then, about an hour into the seriously tedious journey, he said, I completed all the admission procedures for you, so you can start learning in my school tomorrow. What? It was an all-boys school, and I was a girl. Besides, no way was I studying somewhere where my dad was the principal. Panicked, I asked, but dad, isn't it an all-boys school? He said, it used to be, but of late, we've let a few female students in. I can't go there. You're the principal. It'll be so embarrassing. No way. I'll go to another school or something. He gave me a strict look and said, Mom told me all about your behavior in your old school, and it's unacceptable. So, you'll be learning at my school so I can keep an eye on you. This is not up for debate. OMG, I can't believe it. He was much stricter than Mom. So reluctantly, I muttered out, Fine, but only if you promise not to tell anyone I'm your daughter. He nodded and said, Okay, if that's what you want. The school was like something out of one of those weird movies. You know, where the characters think they're safe, but then start disappearing one by one? For starters, it was situated on a hill, miles from anything else. Inside, well, it was so masculine. Browns and grays, and I didn't see one picture in the entire building. The only female thing in the whole place was the girls' restroom. We had to share everything else with the boys. Talk about an inconvenience. The uniform was the same for boys and girls. An oversized shirt and baggy pants and these gross flat shoes. Yuck! During PE, girls were forced to do the same workout as the boys. Bench presses, push-ups, and playing soccer is not my idea of fun. Ugh! And there wasn't even a cheerleading squad. Then, there were all these extra dumb rules for the girls, like... Only uniforms are allowed at school. No skirt, no dress, not even jeans. Do the top button of your shirt up. Tie your hair up into this ugly bun. No flirting with the boys. Yep, that was actually a rule. Can you believe this place? I didn't know whether this was a high school or a prison. I thought this was bad, but I soon realized this school had a major problem. Maybe it's because this school was originally boys only. But man, this place didn't appreciate girls at all. Once in a history class, the teacher asked us what year Abraham Lincoln became president. Easy. 
But before I could even raise my hand, she continued, This question seemed too hard for girls, so do any of the boys know the answer? What? How could she say that? What was with her male chauvinist attitude? This put me in a bad mood, so during dinner, I decided to moan to dad about it. He needed to know how ridiculous his school was, so I told him how I hated his dumb rules and how sexist the teachers were. He glared at me and told me that there weren't enough girls at the school to warrant a separate uniform. Moreover, if girls dressed up, it would only cause distractions for the boys. As for the history teacher, it was just because boys often have larger knowledge than girls on this matter, so maybe she just didn't want to embarrass the girls in case they couldn't give out the right answer. Ha! Huh, what kind of argument was this? It wasn't the olden days. Jeez, these oldies needed to get with the decade. Okay. Fine, I'll prove to the whole school and all the teachers that there weren't only boys here. The next day, I gathered all the girls from my class, um, in fact, there were only two of them, Angela and Carly, and we met up in the only girly place, the girls' restroom. Then I told them, hey girls, welcome to our club, the doll. I think it's about time we fought for our rights and presence in this school, as girls matter too, right? At first, they both seemed worried. I get it, they didn't want to get in trouble, but I soon managed to convince them that it'd be fine. Fun, even. So they came around and agreed. First up, it was time to do something about this awful uniform. We tied up our shirts to expose our waists, and I helped the others put subtle makeup on, so our skin looked like it had a natural glow to it. Then, we all put glittery hair accessories and colorful scrunchies in our hair to jazz up our updos. Carly looked in the mirror and said, Okay, maybe our uniform isn't so bad. And we all burst out laughing. Now, it was time to make an entrance. We all walked along the corridor together. All the boys and girls turned around to look at us with admiring eyes and open mouths. One boy even dropped his stack of books on the floor. And another one walked into his locker. Ha! The charm of girls was absolutely irresistible, right? Soon, we became a popular group around the school. The boys wanted to talk to us, and girls from other classes also joined our group, and I showed them how to style up their uniforms. It's great, right? Yep. There's a problem. The teachers were old fogies who didn't appreciate style. One day, before class, one teacher came up to me and my friends and accused us of ruining the dignity of the uniform and of exerting negative influences on other students. So I told her, we aren't violating any of the school's previous rules. We wear the uniform, we keep our top button done up, and we have the regulation hairstyle. Dressing up is a girl's prerogative. Besides, if boys are distracted, it's their fault, not ours. So you can't blame us for that. After that, I seemed to become a thorn in the side of all the teachers. In every subject, I would always be asked to answer the most difficult questions. And, of course, I didn't know the right answer. I mean, nobody knew it. And then they would give me a gloating look. Ugh, how childish they were. Another time, I was in the lunch queue, and when it was my turn, I chose barbecue chicken drumsticks, as they're my favorite. However, to my surprise, the canteen service said there was no chicken left, then put this weird oatmeal slop on my plate. Ew! I could see there were loads of chicken left, so why was she being so unreasonable? I skipped the gross slop, so as soon as I got home from school, I was so hungry, so I made myself a huge bowl of noodles. Dad saw me devouring the food, then smiled and asked, Has causing trouble at school all day made you that hungry? In between my mouthfuls of food, I told him what had happened with the teacher, and in the canteen. He just smiled and said it was because I was too stubborn. What kind of an excuse was that? I mean, when was starving students a good idea? The next morning, I drowsily walked into class and sat down at my desk. That's when I realized I'd forgotten my phone. Well, this totally sucked, so I moaned to Angela. These teachers make my life a misery, and now I don't even have my phone. Today's going to be a long one. Suddenly, someone knocked on my desk. I looked up and saw my dad, aka the principal, standing there in front of me. 
I was so surprised that before I could say anything, he said, Hey, Cupcake, you left your phone at home. Oh, and I brought you breakfast, as you know how grumpy you get when you're hungry. Then he put my phone and a sandwich on my desk, stroked my hair, then left. What was he doing? Did he forget his promise? Needless to say, my classmates looked shocked. Angela stared at me and said, Huh? The principal is your dad? Unbelievable! Why didn't you tell us? I sat there open-mouthed. This was the most awkward thing ever. Thanks a lot, Dad. But little did I know, that was just the start of a new chapter of craziness. Things were about to get even worse. And oh boy, you wouldn't want to miss out on that. Hey, it's your girl Nicole back again. So my mom couldn't deal with my truancy anymore. So she packed me off to live with my dad. The problem is he's the principal of a snooty school that barely has any female students. And he forced me to attend it. The school needed to get with the times and be more female inclusive. So I started a girls only club called the doll to get us noticed. It was all going well. But then dad let the news slip that I was his daughter. By first break, everyone in school knew who I was. Soon, kids who'd never spoken to me before were offering to help me with my homework. And the teachers seemed nervous around me. I get it. Nobody wanted to be seen quarreling with the principal's daughter. Even the grumpy canteen woman completely changed too. Now, she even gave me double portions of chicken. It sounded good, right? Nope. Instead, it was kind of annoying. Then on top of all this, my friends started doing crazy stuff behind my back. They put lipstick kisses on random lockers, snuck into the faculty room and set up a doll's tea party, and then they did the biggest prank of all. Yep, they actually went into the gym hall and hung up garlands of panties, bras, and tampons alongside a massive banner saying, Welcome to the girls' world. Wow, even I thought they'd gone too far with this one. My dad was fuming about it. I was terrified they'd get expelled. There were barely any girls in the school as it was, without me losing my only female classmates. But they ended up getting a week's worth of detentions and were made to stay behind after school and clean up the gym hall. Phew! The next day, my friends came up to me while I was at my locker, and Angela said, Detention sucks, but that prank was so worth it. Just wait till you see what we've got planned next. She winked. It's definitely going to be a washout. Carly chuckled. Enough was enough. So I told them to inform the rest of the doll to meet me in the gym after school. Okay, so I may have sneakily taken the gym's key out of my dad's pocket, but it was for the greater good. Now I had all of the doll together. I said what I needed to say. Hey girls, look. I know this school favors boys, and it's understandable you want to be seen, but all these pranks are making us look bad. I know my dad, and the only way he's going to listen to us is if we do something that gets across our point in an honorable way. So I'm going to run in the next student council election. Before I'd even finished my sentence, Carly said, but that position is only for the boys. So I replied, I think it's time we change that, don't you? So, who's with me? To my surprise, all of the girls in the room raised their hands and cheered. After that, I launched my campaign. The two candidates with the highest number of votes would go through to the final round. At first, I didn't get much attention. But then, this wasn't surprising, as I was the only girl competing. The other competitors took it super seriously. One boy handed out free t-shirts with his name on them, and another stuck leaflets on everyone's locker, listing 10 reasons why he was the right person for the job. No way. I needed to come up with a plan. So I came up with a familiar but extremely effective strategy called Beauty Trap. Ha! No boy could escape it. One of my main focuses was that I wanted to put the buzz back in this school and make it inclusive for all. So I took that one step further, and me and my team dressed up as cute bees and handed out homemade black and yellow cupcakes. Then, whenever a boy spoke to us, we winked at them, handed them candy, 
and told them it was just for them because they were the cutest. And it worked. Of course. I made the final two, and it came down to me against Brandon, this super smart guy. So now all I needed to do was work on my presentation, which I'd give in the schoolyard. How boring it was. So a bright idea crossed my mind. Why didn't we combine the finals with a prom night where students could not only vote for the potential president, but also dress up and socialize? I told my team about my amazing idea, but to my surprise, they looked doubtful. The teachers will never let that happen. They are so anti-parties, it hurts, Carly said. You just leave this to me, I smirked. My dad may have been strict, but he was no match for me. So that night after dinner, I told him my plan. At first, he was so surprised and didn't agree, as he said that we couldn't combine the election ceremony with a singing and dancing party, as it would take the dignity out of it. Ugh, my dad was stuck in the past. So I said, but dad, it'll be a good opportunity for all the students to hang out with each other. Me and my friends will decorate the hall, find a DJ, sort out the food and drink, and do everything else. I know you have your reservations, and I get that, but prom is an important event for us teenagers. We learn so much from them, how to dance, how to feel good about ourselves, how to mix with each other. Plus, we need this, and I promise I won't let anyone spike the punch. In fact, we won't even have punch. It took a lot more pleading and persuading, but eventually he sighed, then said, Fine, you can have your prom, but don't let me regret it. I squealed in excitement, then rushed over and hugged him. He looked shocked, as thinking about it, this was the first time I'd hugged him in, well, years. I have to admit that it kind of felt good. I instantly messaged the group with my good news, and they replied with memes, love hearts, and dancing emojis. And the talk soon turned to what we were going to wear. See, being friends with the daughter of the principal had many advantages, right? I'm not going to lie, organizing a prom was hard, but luckily for me, I have amazing friends who helped me all the way. Carly sorted out the decorations and found a DJ, and Angela was in charge of tickets. The night of the prom finally arrived, and wow, everyone scrubbed up well. The doll members gave a welcoming dance performance, then Brandon and I went up on stage to give our presentations. Brandon went first, and geez, he's Mr. Serious but he is cute. He went on about improving the nutritional value of school meals, organizing more school trips for the chess, math, and sports clubs, and doing more to help the climate crisis, such as raising money, recycling, and producing solar energy to lower the school's carbon footprint. It sounded convincing, right? But it was a little bit boring. He was such a nerd. I'll bet a cute one. And I had to pretend to itch my nose so I could secretly yawn. I heard clapping. Oh no, that meant it was my turn, and I wasn't prepared. The prom had taken up my time, and ugh, what should I say? That's when I looked over at my dad, who was standing at the back of the room, and I saw him nod at me. So, I took center stage and decided to let my heart do the talking. Hi, guys and girls. Some of you may know me as the rebel girl who stirred up trouble when I first arrived here. Well, Others may just know me as the principal's daughter. The truth is, I'm just a normal student like the rest of you, one who had some major doubts about coming here. I could hear some people whispering in the crowd, but I kept calm and carried on. I didn't think I'd like it here, but it turns out I was wrong. I've made some amazing friends, and I've grown to really kind of like this place. However, the outdated attitude toward the female students frustrates me. Times have changed and we belong here too. So it's only right we have our own uniform, clubs tailored for us, and please, no more bench presses. Girls are just as good as boys, if not even better. For example, we, the awesome girls in the doll, set up this party all by ourselves. Together, let's make our high school life more brilliant and inclusive for all, because this school has something special, and I want everyone to see that with a little care and attention, it can truly buzz. Wow, I'd done it. All of the students cheered and applauded. Even Brandon patted me on the shoulder and said, Well done. Your presentation was so convincing. You've got my vote. Then he winked at me. OMG. 
What did that mean? After that, I joined my friends on the dance floor and made the most of the amazing dance we'd organized. Finally, it was the results time. One of the teachers went on stage with the envelope containing the winner's name. Then she opened it and said, With two-thirds of the votes, you've chosen your winner. And it's... Nicole. I couldn't believe it! I'd done it! I'd actually won! When I walked off the stage, Dad came over and hugged me tight. Then he said, Darling, I'm really proud of you. And that was it. Now I'm the president of the student council, and as I promised in my presentation, I'm making this school an inclusive place for all. Now we have more activities for girls, including a cheerleading club. Although, of course, boys can join too. We even have a girl's uniform, so I don't have to wear those hideous baggy pants anymore. Now, everyone seems happier here, including me. Mom heard about my change in attitude and invited me to come back home. But I can't go back. I belong here in this school with my new friends. Maybe, just maybe, I do love this place after all. Who'd have thought it? It's crazy, huh? I'm standing in the middle of the room wearing this extravagant dress and a glittery mask. All eyes are on me, but I can sense how ingenuine they are. This is supposed to be my sweet 16th, and yet all of these guests were complete strangers. Ugh, it's all that slimeball Gregory's fault. Actually, this OTT party was all down to him. Oh, hi, I'm Vivian, but my friends call me Viv. My mom, Jacqueline Mars, is one of the wealthiest people on earth. So, I grew up thinking massive mansions, gigantic pools, and a floor entirely for toys was the norm. Well, at least I did until I turned 10. That day I was playing in my life-size dollhouse when I heard talking coming from the other side of the fence. I peeked over it and saw a woman and a girl around my age who looked kind of weird. Curious, I spoke up. Hey you, why do you dress so funny? Pardon? What did you say? You don't even have shoes on. That's so silly. You're the silly one. Bet you've never tasted this before, huh? So try it. Spoiled rich kids like you always look down on others. While in fact, you're no use to society. I just stood there dumbfounded as the security shooed them away. I never meant to offend her. I, I was just curious. So I rushed inside the house to find mom and ask her about this. Oh, honey, not anyone can be as wealthy as we are. That means you don't have to worry about a thing, sweet pea. Now go play so mommy can work, okay? Even to this day, mom's words still linger in my ears. I've grown to resent my family's wealth. I just wanted to be a normal kid. That's why, by the time I got to middle school, I convinced mom to let me transfer from my private school to a public one and wipe out everything about me online so no one would know about my influential family. I get the bus to school, buy clothes from thrift shops, and prepare my own lunch instead of bringing the gourmet dish the chefs make for me. A perfect normal life. Until Gregory, Mom's so-called boyfriend, showed up. He sticks his big nose in everything. Thanks to him, Mom wouldn't stop nagging at me about my clothing, my trashy public school, or how I gotta stop hanging out with the mediocre kids. Ugh, he is driving me insane. And to top it off, he gave Mom the idea of throwing me a 16th birthday party. I hate attention. Mom knows this. But what Gregory wants, Gregory gets. This could be an opportunity to introduce her to society and gain new associates. It'd be good for her when she takes over business in the future, blah, blah, blah. Poof. Please. The only thing that man cares about is himself and his associates, not mine. In the end, I agreed to a masquerade ball, on one condition. Mom has to stop interfering with who I should or shouldn't hang out with, especially my friends at school. And that brings us to the present, right when the host announces that it's time for my first dance? Huh? My what now? Ugh, Gregory! I was confusedly looking around to find a partner when suddenly a hand grabbed me. Birthday girl, come dance with me. Ugh, what a creep. Let go! Can somebody help me with this? Suddenly a boy around my age appeared. Oh my. He has the most beautiful gray eyes I've ever seen. 
Excuse me, sir. I believe the lady has agreed to have her first dance with me. Thank you, handsome stranger. As we danced, I couldn't help but stare dreamily into those gorgeous eyes of his. We were about to leave the dance floor when he whispered in my ear, Wait here. I'll be right back. (sighs) Who would have thought a superficial party like this would lead me to my perfect guy? Suddenly, I heard a snapping sound behind me, and as I turned around, my mask fell off. Oh no, a paparazzi cut my mask string. I tried to cover my face with my hands, but it was no use. Luckily, Mum rushed over and hid me behind her. Sorry, everyone, but the party's over. We had a great time and hope to see you all again soon. Then she led me back to my room, while the security showed everyone the way out. From that moment on, my ordinary life ended for good. My face was plastered all over the internet as the billionaire Jacqueline Mars's daughter. Now everyone at school is looking at me funny. I don't get it, guys. I'm still the same old Viv. Oh, there my besties are. They would surely have my back, right? But nope. As I approached them, they went ballistic on me, saying how I don't trust them enough to confess about my actual background. So from now on, we're no longer friends. This is so unfair. I never asked for any of this. I wipe away my tears, trying to act like nothing happened. Huh? What's this? There's a note lying on top of my books that says, Hey, it's me, the guy from your birthday party. I'm so sorry for what happened to you. If you need anyone to talk to, text me anytime. Oh, so he's from our school? Wow, just when I thought no one's there for me, he showed up again. But there's no name, though. Is he still playing this mysterious game? Okay, I'll just call him my mask tonight, then. From that day on, we texted nonstop. He just gets me. My family situation, my friends, everything. One time, he even secretly slid a black pink concert ticket in my bag, since I once told him that I was their diehard fan. Another time, he sent me a gift card to my all-time favorite ice cream store, Ben & Jerry's, just to cheer me up on a bad day. Aww. This ice cream tastes delicious, but I can't help wishing the masked knight was here with me. All I know is he has the most beautiful gray eyes and gorgeous black hair. Hmm. Oh, speak of the devil. Hey, I have a surprise for you this Valentine's Day. Hope you're as excited to see me as I am to see you. Finally, I get to meet the boy I'm crazy about. I can't wait. On Valentine's Day, I was in English staring out of the window and thinking about my masked night. I wonder what he looks like. Ladies, I've brought your Valentine's roses. Here you go, Viv. This is it. It's gotta be from him. Happy Valentine's Day. Have a taste of the rose, then come meet me at the pool. X. I quickly unwrapped the candy, popped it into my mouth, then rushed to meet my dream man. Well, where was he? As I tried calling him, the room started to spin. I saw the outline of a blurred black figure, then... Ugh... My head is killing me. Where am I? And whose hand am I holding? Hold on. Those eyes. He must be. Thank goodness you're awake. Uh, Are you the one who danced with you at your birthday party? In the flesh. I'm Jeremiah, by the way. I had higher hopes for our first face-to-face meeting, but oh well. (laughs) Turns out, he always knew I went to the same school as him but he was a bit intimidated by my family's influence, so he decided to get to know me via text first. He said the cops had found some sort of sleep-inducing substance in my rose candy. Before I could quiz him anymore on this, Mom barged into the room and hugged me. After making sure I was okay, she turned to Jeremiah and said, You saved my daughter. For that, I can never thank you enough. Please join us for dinner tomorrow night. Jeremiah seemed hesitant at first, but then he nodded in agreement. Hmm. The dinner did not go as planned. Between Mum's blatant interrogating and Gregory's menacing looks, I could sense Jeremiah's discomfort. Then when Jeremiah asked where the restroom was, Gregory insisted on showing him. When Jeremiah returned, he seemed flustered and made his excuses to leave. Gah. What had that annoying Gregory said to him? I quickly followed Jeremiah and apologized, but he just smiled and offered to pick me up for school tomorrow.
The cops haven't found the culprit yet, so from now on, I'll be your guardian. How sweet. After that, I hung out with him every day. Great, right? Only, somehow it didn't feel the same as when we were texting. Back then we had a deep connection. Now it was just like two friends hanging out. Oh, and not to mention Olivia, Jer's childhood friend who can't seem to leave him alone for more than two seconds. One time, Jer and I were at the movies together, but guess who coincidentally appeared and plonked herself down next to him? Yep, Olivia. Worse still, with their giggling and popcorn sharing, I felt like the third wheel. I was not having this again. So I just left for home in this random cab parked outside the theater. But bad luck. The driver doesn't know the way. He doesn't even have a phone. And I had to lend him mine for GPS. The guy snatched it out of my hand immediately. Rude. But wait, it was 9 p.m. already. Why did he still have shades on? And even wore a mask? Right then, I realized the car had passed the town's border. Stop! The car suddenly filled with smoke. And the last thing I thought was, he has eyes that were exactly like... Jairs. I woke up finding myself in this old, cobwebby room. Where is this place? And that driver guy? I have to get out of here now. <clears throat> ah. Right at that moment, he came into the room with a smile. Don't you recognize me? Will you have another dance with me? Because I'd love that. What is happening right now? What he just said. Did that mean... He's the actual masked knight? Maybe that's why I don't feel connected to Jeremiah. Why did Jer lie to me then? So many questions popped up in my head. Then suddenly I heard a car stop outside. That guy immediately went to check. This could be my chance of escaping. By the time I got downstairs, I saw the driver guy talking to... Jeremiah. So I hid behind the door and watched on. Cameron, just stop this. Getting revenge on our father is one thing. But this is a step too far. Take Viv back to her family now and end this. I know this looks bad, but trust me, I'd never hurt Viv. I didn't mean for her to fall into the pool. That's why I jumped in to save her. But I need her as bait to show the world what that jerk Gregory is like. He doesn't deserve to be her father. <gasps> I muzzled myself in shock. Gregory is their father? And that Cameron guy was the one saving me. Not Jer? Don't you forget who abandoned us when mom had a close brush with death, then took all our business and properties, even our home, leaving us helpless? That jerk deserves all he gets. I was trying to process it all, when another car arrived. Gregory's. I quickly hid under the stairs before he walked in with a bunch of bodyguards. Cameron, Jeremiah, my sons, haven't you grown up so fast? Cut to the chase. Give us back the business, and what's rightfully ours. Then we'll let your stepdaughter go. Huh, <laughs> indeed. Like father, like sons. Very smart. But still amateurs, my boys. You see, all that girl is to me is an obstacle blocking my way to the inheritance. So please, be my guest and take care of that little Miss Annoying. Aren't you afraid we'll expose everything you just said? And who's gonna believe you now? Jacqueline is mesmerized by me so she'd believe anything I say. <laughs> that snake. How dare he speak of my mom like that? Unable to hold in my rage, I jumped out of my hiding spot and screamed at Gregory. What did you say about my mom? You slimy, lying traitor. Nice talking to you all, but the fun has to end here. Goodbye. The guards lunged forward, about to tie me up when... The cops smashed the door coming in, and behind them was... Mom! Stop right there. How dare you do this to my daughter? Gregory's face turned paler than a ghost as he mumbled out, Jackie, honey, why you're here? Um, but just in time to save our baby, Vivian. Cut the act. I already heard everything you said. And you're going to jail for a long time. Then the cops led him and took his crook guards away. Seeing Mom... I was so happy I rushed to hug her. Turns out, her investigations of the pool incident led her to Cameron. So when she confronted him, he eventually told her everything. That's how they came up with a plan to catch Gregory red-handed. Mom and the cops had been waiting in ambush around here for Gregory to show up. 
then, well, you know the rest. A lot has happened in three months. Mom finally finished all the legal stuff, so now the property Gregory had merged with hers to gain her trust is now signed back over to Cam and Jeremiah. I realized that being wealthy isn't a bad thing, especially as it means with influence like this, I can help other less fortunate people and really make a difference. Now I help mom with her business and her charity work, and I'm really enjoying it. I'm proud of my hard-working, amazing mom, and I'm proud of who I am. And guess what? I now have real friends who like me for me. As for Jeremiah, well, he apologized about everything. He used to fear his brother was going to hurt me, so he lied to protect me. We made up, of course, and became the best of friends. I'm not sure I can say the same about his brother, though. He did everything he could to beg for my forgiveness, but I just can't. Then one day, Jer asked me to come by his home to visit his mom. She begged me not to think badly of her boys, especially Cameron. He's in love with you, you know? He always talks about you, and how he wishes things would have been different. Oh boy, her words are starting to have an effect on me. When I walked out the door, I saw Cameron sitting on the porch. He turned and looked at me, and I felt my heart pound for my gray-eyed, masked night. So, taking a deep breath, I walked over to him, just as the sun was setting. Hi, Mia here. Not to brag, but since childhood, I've always been kinda a genius. I've already stacked up over 20 science-based awards, and by adding this one more trophy into my collection, I even got to skip a grade. Your achievements at such a young age are admirable. What's your plan next? Well, I've decided to drop out of school. Yep, that's my plan. With this impressive of a profile, I'm just one research paper away from being accepted onto the Space Up Astronomical Research Program. Why waste time on boring classes, right? But ugh, mom and dad didn't like the idea of me not graduating. So after a lot of compromises, I did get to move to Quebec with my grandparents for a year. But I still had to go to school there. And voila, here I am in Canada, ready to conquer my dream. But why was there this angry crowd in front of my new home? They were screaming, cursing, vandalizing. My grandparents secretly signaled me inside the back way, then glumly told me how the crowd were parents of the children who got food poisoning after attending Riverside School summer camp. The problem was, the food was provided by my grandparents' farm, and now the school is threatening to file a lawsuit and doesn't seem to be open for negotiation. That can't be. There must be a solution for this. So gathering up my courage, I knocked on the principal's door. Do I know you? Um, I don't think so, ma'am. I'm Mia Jones, granddaughter of Mr. Peterson, the rancher. Wait, Mia Jones from New York? Hmm, come in. The woman must have been Mrs. Robinson, the principal's wife. But does she know me? As soon as we sat down, she said, I will withdraw the charges for you. Oh, ma'am, really? I knew we could sort this out amicably. Oh, but my sweet child, I don't do charity. I know what you're capable of, so I will only drop the lawsuit if you make my daughter the top student at school. In other words, you'll exchange all test results with her. What do you think? What do I think? I think that's a crazy proposition. But if I didn't do this, then the form would go under. So, with a reluctant nod, I agreed. Then I was immediately taken to meet her daughter. I was expecting someone snooty and spoiled, but to my surprise, this super smiley girl greeted me. Hey, I'm Eliana, but just call me Al. I'm so sorry about my mom. She's got it into her head that I need to excel at school, since my dad is the principal. Al hesitated for a bit, then continued. Also, there's Nora, the super smart daughter of my dad's ex. Mom doesn't want me to suck and dad to favor this other girl over me, so... Thinking about it, my main purpose for coming here was to complete my astronomical research. I don't need any more A, so I smiled at L. Don't worry, I'll make sure you're the star student in no time. The next morning, I went to school with L, and wow, it looked so ancient and calm. Definitely distinctive from my stuffy school in New York. L introduced me to her friends, and they all seemed really welcoming. It's gonna be great here. Still holding the deal, I helped Elle answer the teacher's questions, exchanged assignments and homework with her, and soon, Elle had already climbed up to the top rank. On the contrary, I was at the bottom of the class. 
Oh, wow. Elle's mom really wasn't kidding when she said her grades were bad. But that didn't matter to me anyway. Because the only thing I care about is this amazing astronomy tower. Talk about heaven. What are you doing here? I turned around to see Nora, the girl Elle had mentioned before, who is also the astronomy club's president. Hi, I'm Mia. I want to be part of your team. I have experience in studying astronomy and... Stop blabbering. Your grades suck, and we have a strict no idiots allowed policy. I told Nora to at least give me a chance to prove myself, so she sat me down and sniggered as she handed me an astronomy test. Easy peasy. I got all the answers right in just ten minutes. But instead of welcoming me into the club, she accused me of cheating. Ugh! Nora didn't just dislike me, she also seemed to despise Elle too. Any chance she got to call us out on something, she would definitely take it. Sir, they're cheating! I... I just want to help Mia. Please, I'm so sorry. Huh? Who was helping who? Mia, you've got a lot of nerve. Your test is suspended. The whole class was giving me disapproving looks. Being this disrespected by my peers was a new experience for me. How could Elle tell life so calmly? Great, now that I was labeled a cheater, I would never get accepted into the astronomy club ever. Mia the cheater just had to find her way to get in there then. So, I waited until dark then sneaked into the janitor's room to steal the key to the observation tower. <sighs> now I could freely study my favorite constellation without any interruptions. Montreal is close to the North Pole, so the night sky here is so clear that I could see all the stars. At this rate, my research could be done faster than expected. Then I would be out of here, leaving all of these childish rivalry dramas behind. One night, I was busy taking notes when someone opened the door and walked in. Who's there? Oh no! I hastily grabbed my papers and escaped through the emergency exit door. Who is the guy? Why is he here at this hour? The next morning, I pushed my way through the noisy crowd and saw the announcement on the school spin board. The astronomy club warned outsiders not to use the observatory room and that there would be severe punishment once the recent trespasser was discovered. Shoot, the guy from last night must have snitched on me. Turned out, the snitch was Brandon, the new transfer student, and also the grandson of the founder of Space Up. It's a shame the incredible Sir Edward Foster's grandson was such a smug jerk. But that didn't stop all the girls from going cuckoo crazy for this Brandon guy. The ironic thing is, he kept on coming over to me and talking about astronomy. Huh? Doesn't everyone here see me as an insignificant kid? Is this yours? Brandon said while holding out a piece of paper. Oh. My. This was part of my astronomy research. Did I drop it in the tower that night? But how did Brandon know it was mine? Flustered, I quickly made an excuse and left. I couldn't stop worrying about Brandon finding out I was the one who used the observatory room. If anyone knows about it, it'd be an instant suspension. I was busy thinking when suddenly the whole class burst into applause. As it turned out, they were praising my excellent essay on constellations. Well, it's known as Elle's essay now. Then the teacher turned to read the class's worst essay. My favorite star is Justin Bieber. Every time I see him, I think if only he was my husband. Everyone started laughing. <sighs> no prize for guessing whose name was on this one. Mia, I suggest you learn something from your friend Elle. I turned to look at Elle and saw her smug face. She even joined in with the others to make fun of me. Was she really that stupid to write that essay? Or did she intend to embarrass me? When I got home, Elle was already waiting on the porch to apologize to me. I helped you as promised. Shouldn't your mom keep her promise too? Get the lawsuit dismissed now. Then I'll help you finish your final exam successfully. Else, I'm not doing it. She's on it, Mia. Don't worry. I know you're leaving after a year anyway, and I also know that you're the one who snuck into the observatory. So, if you want to leave peacefully, at least help me and Brandon to get together. You and Brandon? But what does it have to do with me? Elle then told me that Brandon was so impressed by her astronomy essay that he asked her out to discuss it further. But of course, she knew nothing about it, so she had a plan. I'll have my AirPod on, and you gotta stay on the line with me throughout the date so you could tell me the answers to his questions. If we become official, I'll buy you that telescope you bang on about so much. You know, that thingy-majiggy. Celestron! Celestron Telescope! Oh man, she really knew my weak spot. Alright then, we have a deal. That weekend, Elle and Brandon went for a walk in Jerry Park while I stayed at home eavesdropping on their conversation through the phone. 
I see you have a passion for the Astros. So why didn't you join the astronomy club? Just because I'm busy with my studies, and I also have piano practice, you know. Really? Oh, in the paper, you mentioned the black hole Sagittarius A. You seem to have done a lot of research about it. Could you tell me more? Although Elle seemed frantic having me put words in her mouth, everything went pretty smoothly. Only one thing. The more Brandon and I talked, the more I realized we had so much in common. Even if it was through Elle, I still felt a connection with him. I thought everything was going well between them, but no. One day, Elle came to me in a fit of anger and said Brandon had turned down her love confession. I want you to go talk to him and figure out why. I need to know the reason. What? Why don't you just ask him? Because I'm me, Eliana Robinson. I don't ask such embarrassing questions. So I was the one who had to make the embarrassing move? Also, call me. I want to hear it myself. Gosh, this bossy girl. And so I had to drag Brandon to the quiet rooftop while my phone was secretly on a call with Elle so she could follow the conversation. Okay, let's get straight to the point. Why did you reject Elle? Um, because I like someone else? If you already like someone else, then why hang out with her? Because only when I go out with Elle, I can talk to the person I like. It's disappointing though, why don't you recognize me? I quickly ended the call hoping Elle didn't understand what was going on. He already knew I was behind Elle's words all this time? It turned out Brandon had met me once in the city's ranking contest for students in 6th grade, in which I surpassed him and won the first prize. He'd never met a kid smarter than him in astronomy before, so when he saw me again at school, he instantly recognized me. Only, he couldn't understand why my score was so low. Brandon wanted to talk to me, but he said that all he received was a cold shoulder. I felt a bit guilty, but it's all because he told the school administration I snuck into the astronomy room. But it turned out Nora was the one who reported me. Nora was there at the time too. By the way, why do you have to do Elle's homework? I told Brandon about my contract with Mrs. Robinson and apologized for not thinking about his feelings when I agreed to be behind his and Elle's date. I see. Follow me. There's something you should know. Brandon took me to see Nora. She didn't welcome me at first, but when Brandon told her about my secret, Nora immediately changed her attitude. I should've known. Someone like Elle couldn't make such progress. She and her mom are deceiving everyone again. Then, Nora told me how she was secretly investigating the food poisoning case because, on the day of summer camp, she saw Mrs. Robinson and Elle doing something shady in the school kitchen. Why should I trust you? Elle told me that you have it in for her. So maybe you're just trying to ruin her life. <sighs> Please, why do I have to do that? Believe it or not, your precious best friend is trying to embarrass you in front of the whole school. What is this? In the lecture hall, Elle was sitting in front of a screen which said, Mia's grandpa poisoned us? We rushed to the lecture hall to find her there, telling people that my grandparents were the ones that catered spoiled food. And that I had no shame copying her works, cheating many times, and even stealing Brandon from her while they were dating. So she must have figured out that Brandon liked me, huh? Even so, why didn't she talk to me directly? How dare she make things up about me and my family? Before I could do anything, Brandon changed what was on the screen to a video of me winning the Young Minds Intelligence Contest. Everybody started buzzing when they recognized who I was. Someone even spoke loudly. I watched that show. Is that really Mia? Elle's face turned pale as people started doubting her. Then Nora snatched the mic from Elle's hand and said, So, now we've made it clear that Mia isn't dumb at all. Then what about the poisoning at the camp? Did anyone find it strange how only Elle and her mother showed no sign of poisoned symptoms that day? That's because they were the ones who poisoned the food and blamed it on Mia's grandparents. The screen continued to show a clip of Elle's mom looking shady as she spoke to some man. She did all that just to ruin Mia's grandparents' good reputation. Then she would hire this man to buy the farm on her behalf for a ridiculously low price. What did you say? Oh my god, the principal has been standing at the door and witnessed everything. Everyone, out! When there were only four of us left in the room, Elle furiously shouted, How dare you! You're just the outcome of your cheater mom, remember? Don't play dumb with me. You're well aware that my mom didn't cheat on Mr. Robinson, and that your mom is the one who lied to him to ruin his and my mom's wedding. And then what? Lying again that you're his daughter to force him to stay with her? You and your mom are awful people. Mr. Robinson stood in between them and stopped the argument. Oh, he didn't look too well either. 
Turns out, he already knew Nora's mom was wrongfully framed and didn't cheat on him at all. And that's why he always tried to make it up to Nora. But learning that Elle wasn't his daughter was one big bombshell. After knowing what his wife and daughter did, he decided to resign. He made amends with Nora's mom and they're giving it another go. After the truth came out, Elle and her mom left without a trace. I say, good riddance to bad news. My grandparents were cleared of the food poisoning allegations and now their business is booming again. With Brandon and Nora's help, I collected enough data and finished my assignment with flying colors. Now to quit high school and pursue my dreams. <laughs> just kidding. I'm just going on a short trip to Mont Megantic National Park to see the Northern Lights with Brandon and Nora. I've decided to stay and finish high school here so I can continue pursuing my passion for astronomy with my two... I was rushing to finish homework when suddenly a screeching shout startled me. Julia, why did you hide the letter Ben sent me? <laughs> what? You've lost your mind, Katie. I already gave it to you. And didn't you say this guy was too ordinary for you? Why are you such a liar? This Ben guy tried calming her down, but it was too late. Everyone around us was already whispering. Ugh, I was not to blame for this. Guess what? That girl putting on the poor me act is my sister, Katie. We once were really close, but suddenly, boom, she changed. Now all she does is pick a fight with me. Oh, thank God. Here are my people. My dance club friends. Only dancing could help liven up my mood right now. We were happily chatting on the way to practice when suddenly... Julia, where are you going? Get back to class right now. Finals week is coming. <laughs> no way. You don't know how Katie just embarrassed me in front of the whole class. I'll never go back there. Stop making excuses. Then he dragged me back to the classroom. That's Max, my overbearing older brother. His catchphrases include, Julia, where are you going? Remember to come back before 9pm. You still have lots of homework to do. Or, Julia, come back and change your clothes. The dress you're wearing is too short. You see, I'm 16, not 6. Why does he keep treating me like a child? Worse still, this semester, he decided to move to my school to be able to watch my every step or something. Ugh, it's unbearable! After school, I came home exhausted, but unfortunately, this awful day was not over yet. Dad was there waiting for me, my report card in hand. Julia, there's not even a single B on here. Those dumb equations just wouldn't stick to my head. Dad, I've tried. Tried, you say? So it has nothing to do with you skipping school to go dancing, huh? Oh no, in her hand were a bunch of pictures of me practicing. Okay then, it's about time I let my parents know about my passion anyway. I think I want to pursue something else, which is dan- No, Julia, studying is the only way. I don't care what you do, as long as your grades improve. Please learn from your brother and sister. Study, 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 study all the time! I angrily stormed upstairs and slammed shut my door. Then I heard my mom's voice whispering outside. Never mention dancing again, Julia. Give it up. That silly hobby won't do you any good. What does she know? She isn't even my actual mom. Yes, they're just mine and Max's adoptive parents. I bet if my actual mom and dad were still alive, they'd understand and not forbid me from following my dreams. But life is too cruel. As our parents died 10 years ago in a traffic accident, then Max and I were in an orphanage until we were adopted and came to live here with our adoptive parents, a biology professor, a housewife, and their daughter, Katie. After a restless night of overthinking, the next morning, I trudged through the schoolyard like a zombie. Suddenly, a tall figure crashed into me. Ouch! The guy apologized profusely. Then, he told me he hadn't been paying attention as he was too engrossed in a cool video. Oh, this is our club's dance video I posted yesterday. We immediately started chatting. So, his name is Daniel. He's a new transfer student here, but already a big fan of our club. We were watching another video together when his phone screen popped up a message. Hey, are you free tomorrow night? Katie? Oh, that's definitely my sister Katie. Why does she have to appear everywhere? Anyway, after I parted ways with Daniel, I excitedly ran to the practice room to tell my friends about our new hardcore fan. I waved at them, but they just ignored me. Weird. Hey guys, what's wrong? Don't you know? Julia, yesterday your mom called everyone asking to disband the club. Your mom even blamed me for being a bad influence and distracting you from studying. So please, stay away from us from now on. What? My mom said that? How did she even know their numbers? You're welcome, Pumpkin. I've helped you introduce your dear friends to Mom. They seem to get along really well, don't they?
Katie? Again? Why am I even surprised? I stumped after her. Then from afar, I spotted Daniel waving at her as they passed by each other. And she immediately turned on her flirty mode. Hmm, I suddenly thought of a great idea. Well, well, just wait and see, my beloved sister. <laughs> When Katie walked off, I quickly ran over to chat with Daniel, and it didn't take long for me to lure him into my trap. My friends are all going on about the new Jurassic World movie. Have you seen it? I want to watch it too, but I have no one to go with. Is that so? Actually, I was planning on seeing that movie this weekend. Let's go together. Bingo! The fish has taken the bait. Katie, you took away the one thing I love the most, and now watch me do the same to you. That Saturday night, I happily went to the cinema in a pretty dress. No sign of Daniel yet, so I got to my seat first. But... Julia, what on earth are you doing here? Oh, Katie, the prey even showed up by herself. Nice. She immediately jumped on me, accusing me of stalking and ruining her date. We argued loudly until a member of staff kicked us out. A few days later, Daniel and I met at a cafe he chose. But right away, I saw Katie at the next table. Again. She seemed to be waiting for someone. I walked over to her. You're so persistent on being a third wheel. She was so angry but couldn't say anything. I went back to the table and sat with Daniel. Huh? What? There's ketchup all over my dress! Mmm, that does it! So I lunged at her and we started brawling. And here we are, at the cop station, waiting to be bailed out. As soon as mom arrived, Katie put on her waterwork sack and sobbed about how I was trying to steal away the love of her life. I couldn't be around either of them anymore, so I left with Daniel. We weren't far from the cop station when Max rushed out from nowhere. Stay away from my sister! And why would I? Then my brother punched Daniel in the face! What are you doing? It's Katie! She's the one who keeps messing with us! No, Julia. Katie is just a victim. Stop seeing this guy. Great. Now even Max was defending Katie. I helped Daniel up and left with him despite Max's calls from behind. The next day, I was putting things in my locker when I saw Max and Katie passing by, looking real close. They were whispering something to each other, as if his real sister was her, not me. Fine then, if that meant I would stop being supervised. Katie still wouldn't leave me alone, though. There were countless times she squeezed between me and Daniel, laughing with him as if I didn't exist. Another time, when we were about to kiss, she jumped out of nowhere, gave Daniel a concert ticket, then the two of them left together. So annoying. Honestly, it's no longer about taking revenge on Katie anymore. I do feel happy when I'm with Daniel. He seemed to want to be with me, too, but why didn't he just reject Katie? But at least it was me he invited to the prom this Friday. Not her. That night, I excitedly put on my prom dress, curled my hair, did my nails. Everything's all set. Daniel would be here soon. I opened the door to go downstairs when, oh no, it had been locked from outside. My parents were on vacation, so it had to be my cruel siblings. I immediately called my parents, but all I received was, You shouldn't be even thinking about prom, considering how bad your grades have been lately. Stay home and study. Right at that moment, there was the sound of an engine outside. I ran to the window and saw Katie getting into Daniel's car. I banged on the door and yelled, but only Max's voice came from outside. Julia, that guy is not good at all. Just leave this to me and Katie. Why are you on her side and not mine? Why is everyone turning their back on me? I felt like such an outsider in this family, so from then on, I did my best to ignore them all. I passed without a word as Max and Katie gathered around our parents after their trip. Then I stayed silently in my room, ignoring Max's call outside the door. I also tried ignoring Daniel, but he continued calling me. I think you've got the wrong number. I'm not Katie. Huh? Julia, what's wrong with you? Um, let's see. You left me alone and went to prom with Katie? Oh, that... I already saw Katie waiting as I arrived. She said you'd already left for prom with your friends. I looked for you everywhere. I was thinking about you the whole party. Gosh, Katie is taking things too far. Even my poor Daniel has to put up with her stupid tricks. Baby, what should I do to make you feel better? How about a road trip? Let's spend this weekend together, just us two. Honestly, all I need is Daniel's sweet voice to make my anger go away. I'd love that. I'm so sick and tired of being in this nightmare house. Being alone with Daniel felt amazing. After two hours of driving, we pulled up at a gas station to take a break, and he told me to pick anything I wanted. 
This trip is on me. I have to make it up for my princess, don't I? Oh, how did I get such a wonderful boyfriend? I stuffed my face with snacks as I waited for Daniel to return from the restroom. Hmm, what's taking him so long? Just as I was going to step outside to look for him, the cashier stopped me. I'm sorry, miss. You haven't paid for those. Also, your friend left you this. Then he gave me a bunch of papers. One of them was a note saying, Surprise! Take this as your first life lesson, honey. Don't be so gullible. If you're wondering why you deserve all this, go ask your lovely brother Max. Din. I stared down at the other papers. Receipts! This came to hundreds. He'd grab all these random things, including five boxes of Mountain Dew. Is this for real? How could this guy be the guy I was deeply in love with just seconds ago? I was on the verge of breaking down. But first, I still had this huge bill to pay. Oh god, where do I get the money for all this? Should I call my family for help? No, no way. I could already hear Max scolding, then my parents nagging, and Katie's scornful look. And so, I begged the store owner to let me work here to pay back the bill. It's not so bad. At least I wouldn't have to go home. But only, I kept on messing up. I clogged the slushy machine so the floor was covered in sugared ice. I knocked over the sunglasses stand while cleaning and constantly counted change incorrectly. It was a disaster. Maybe if I'd pay more attention in math, it wouldn't be this bad. I tried everything, but all I did was create more trouble instead of paying back the money. Eventually, they kicked me out. And now all I can do is sit at this abandoned bus stop, not knowing where to go or who to find. Thinking about my life with my family before made me tear up. If only, suddenly, a familiar car stopped in front of me. Dad! Julia, here you are. Everyone's been frantically searching for you. I'm so glad you're okay. Why did you scare us like this? I'm sorry, Dad. Dancing is my only passion, but I knew you wouldn't accept it. No, Julia. I'd never stop you pursuing what you love. I used to think you were just making up excuses for being lazy. Right at that moment, another car pulled over. It was Max, my mom, and even Katie. What on earth are you doing? If you keep acting like this, mom and dad will kick us out. Max, why would you think such a thing? Max let go of me, then hesitantly said, I know you take education very seriously, so I always try my best at school. Julia and I are just adopted, so... Actually, I'm adopted too. I've overheard this once from mom and dad. So ever since then, I was scared they'd love Julia more than me and throw me out. Oh, my baby. It's true. We adopted all three of you. This doesn't change a thing. You're our children and we love you all. And only wish for you to care and look out for each other. Whoa. This was all too much to take in. My emotions were all over the place and I didn't know whether to smile or cry. Secrets only make us misunderstand one another. So from now on, we won't hide anything, okay? On that note, I'm sorry, honey. Let me tell you all this one last secret that I've been keeping to myself all these years. It turned out that my adoptive mom was mine and Max's biological dad's ex. After our parents died, she offered to take us in. Our adoptive dad didn't know the story behind that, and he only knew about an ex of my adoptive mom who was a pro dancer. Mom was so afraid dad would find out about me and my brother's true identity and be angry, so she tried her best to hide my dance talent. But she never expected her husband to be this generous and understanding. So all problems were resolved and family peace was restored. Oh boy, I miss home so much. But now was not the time to go back. Us three siblings had one more important task. Expose Daniel. Can you believe that Daniel turned out to be my brother's best friend from his old school? Daniel misunderstood my brother's friendship for love, so when Max rejected him, he felt like a fool and started causing problems for Max. That's why Max transferred schools, but Daniel followed him there. Knowing Max loved his two sisters very much, he deliberately approached us both and played tricks to make us resent each other. After that time at the police station, Max told Katie about this and worked up a plan to expose Daniel. We found Daniel's current partner and invited him to meet them at a diner. Then we told him everything his boyfriend had done. Needless to say, he was so angry he finished with Daniel and exposed his true face to the whole school. Facing a barrage of criticism, Daniel was scared and apologized to the three of us and promised to make up for it. Well, now that I have a happy family, I can freely pursue my dance passion. What else do I need? Just looking at Daniel being subservient is enough to satisfy me. <laughs>
I was sitting at my usual spot in the common room during break time. Coding, of course. Eyes glued to my MacBook Pro when suddenly, Evelyn, my best friend, barged in and ran straight over to a group of girls. Here she goes again. Guys, guys, I've got big news. You all know Helen, right? The cheerleader? Kay, she has a huge crush on Dean, so she went to the locker and it said yes. Now guess what? I just saw them in the hallway kissing. Ha! Huh? These gossip vultures will believe anything. Confused? Let me wrap it up for you. They were talking about this mysterious locker situated in the school's back alley. The creepy part was it could actually speak and foretell your future love partner. For it to work, you had to visit the locker between 6 and 7 p.m. Tap on it exactly three times and say the spell. Roses are red, violets are blue, in a world of love, just we two. Then, ask it if you and your crush are compatible. If the locker said yes, then congratulations. But if no, then too bad. This proves it. The locker must have some sort of prophecy power. Of course, duh. You know why? Because it's possessed by a lovelorn spirit. <laughs> oh boy. If only these naive kids knew the truth. The mystical locker that they so worshipped was actually a product of advanced IT, of which the mastermind was moi. Didn't see that coming, did you? I'm Karina, by the way. But people like to call me Robot Girl because I'm a super proud tech genius. But kids my age didn't appreciate my talents as they only seemed to care about love. Especially Alicia over there. She despised IT and presumed that anyone into it was a stone-cold machine who'd never ever had a relationship. <laughs> so, being the tech was that I am, I had to come up with a brilliant plan to prove her wrong. I spent every bit of spare time I had coding. I hacked into the school system to collect students' infos, such as their star signs, blood type, hobbies, and career orientation. Then, I used this as a database to create a love compatibility calculator. And just like that, my first brainchild was born. Easy peasy. Using it was simple. All I had to do was insert the two names and it'd show me a yes or a no. Knowing how much my peers buy into the whole spiritual stuff, I devised my locker plan. I found this rusty locker at the dead-end alley behind our school. Super glued a walkie-talkie inside, locked it well. Then, with the other walkie-talkie in hand, I stayed in the school equipment room, which is convenient enough to be on the other side of the wall. To top it up a notch, I even used a voice changer app to get a perfect ghostly haunted tone. Then, I anonymously spread rumors about the locker's magical powers onto the school's blog. My trick quickly took off, and since launch day, 15 couples have been successfully matched. Can you imagine? True love? Oh, please. It all came down to some simple algorithms. That's all. But one more thing. I hadn't exactly told Evelyn about this. Yeah, I love her, but she's not the best at keeping secrets. To be exact, she's a walking speaker who couldn't help but blab any gossip she'd heard to the entire school. Anyway, I needed to test if the locker actually worked first. Then I'd tell her. Maybe when I reach 20 successful couples. Luckily for me, keeping this one secret from her turned out to be easy, as her attention was all on her crush, Jace, the school's hot boy. In her eyes, Jace was like an angel or something. It seems like I'm the only one who didn't get the gooey eyes memo. One evening, I was taking my locker shift when I heard a familiar voice. Evelyn's! Oh boy. I could already guess she wanted to ask about her and Jace. The algorithm said yes, and I could hear Evelyn screaming ecstatically at the announcement. <sighs> Fine, if she's happy, I'm happy. But it didn't last long, as an hour later, just as I was about to leave, more footsteps came towards the locker, and I heard a knock on it. Roses are red, violets are blue. Hold on, Jace? What was he doing out here? Can I become a couple with... Karina? What? No way! Had something hit his head? 
I immediately said no. No calculator needed for that. He stayed silent at first, but then asked again if I'd be his girlfriend. The answer was still no. He asked the locker again and again, but no, no, no. Jeez, what's with this guy? The next day at school, I noticed Evelyn's wearing her lucky lilac dress. Oh no, was she going to confess to Jace? I had to stop this. Hey, I have an emergency thingy. You need to come with me. Karina, what are you doing? But it was too late as Jace was approaching us. Hey, what are you playing? Tug of war? <laughs> oh, I think you messed up your hair. Here, let me. Jeez, he was unnecessarily close. And the worst part was that Evelyn just witnessed the whole thing. Right at that moment, the bell rang and she left for class. Jace, this idiot! The locker said no already, and there he went, messing it all up. Now, I had to wait till the end of class to explain things to Evelyn. But things weren't that easy, as every time I tried to approach her, she gave me this flustered look, then hurried away. One time, I managed to reach her, but then, yep, you guessed it, shameless Jace showed up and ruined the conversation. Gosh, this leech wouldn't quit bothering me. In math class, he asked the teacher to let him change from Evelyn's group to mine, cause he suddenly wanted me to tutor him. The worst part was, the more I tried to ignore him, the more interested in me he seemed to get. Until one day, as I was running away from him, I bumped into someone. It was the school's head boy, Killian. Oh man, I was sure I was in trouble, but... Can you see you're bothering her? Quit it already. Did Killian just defend me? But, uh-oh, that sure made Jace mad. It's none of your business. Excuse me, this is a library, not a theater club. Keep quiet or out. Phew, thank God I got out of there. But... Come to think of it, that was a strange thing for the normally stern-faced Killian to do. Hmm, whatever. I don't have time to think about this right now. So far, the locker had predicted 19 couples successfully. I just needed one more match, then I could proudly make my invention public. And voila! My app would change the whole world's dating scene. Here it is, my 20th client. Wait, isn't that... Killian? And guess who he's asking about? Yeah, me. Maybe everyone was right about the robot girl nickname. Cause how could I be so clueless all this time about Jace and now Killian? I inserted the data and the result was a no. But hang on, what if I did it, Killian? Would that make Jace give up and stop bothering me? And Evelyn wouldn't keep her distance from me anymore. It settled. The locker pronounced, yes. Monday morning, I was in the study hall, working on the math group project with Jace, when a note was passed to me. Hey, I know this is a bit sudden, but would you like to go out with me? Saturday, 3 p.m.? Killian. I took a peek at him and saw him smiling for the first time ever. Okay. I was about to write my answer when Jay snatched the note, read it, then stared straight at Killian. You, me, outside. What was he gonna do now? I sneakily followed them to the hallway, but Evelyn appeared right behind me and signaled me to shush. That was when I heard Jace asking what was going on between me and Killian. Nothing really. Only the infamous love locker foretold Karina and I would be together. Jace was too stunned to speak as he turned purple with rage. So there's nothing going on between you and Jace? Of course not. I've been trying to tell you that this whole time. You've heard everything? Sorry, I didn't mean to. So, what do you think about the date? Um, sure. I'd love to. I could see Jace's boiled over from behind, but what could he do other than bear his grudge and storm off? <laughs> Problem solved. Saturday arrived and Killian picked me up for our date. He even asked for my parents' approval, then opened the car door for me like a true gentleman. 
To be honest, I was kind of nervous, but he was so good at comforting me. He then took me to the super cool ice cream drive through And coincidentally, we picked the same flavor. Butter pecan. <laughs> Before I noticed, I'd felt so comfortable around him already. And you know what the best part was? Our last stop was a planetarium. We sat side by side beneath the glistening star-filled sky. Whoa. This date was much more than I expected. I got to see this whole new side of him. One that is so warm and caring. Being with him made me feel... good. Maybe the algorithms weren't quite accurate, right? It did say Killian and I would never be a couple, but what I was feeling then proved otherwise. I was still lost in thoughts when my alarm suddenly went off. 5.15 already? Right, I'd gotta get to the locker and change the walkie-talkie's battery. So I quickly said goodbye to Killian, then ran to the alley. As I was opening the locker to get the walkie-talkie out, Karina? Are you opening the locker? How? Unless you're... Oh. I don't know how, but you sure tricked the entire school. I froze on the spot, not knowing what to do. There's no need to freak out. I'm not gonna tell a soul. That is, as long as you become a girlfriend. Why are you so obsessed with me? You can have anyone else you want. Why me? Cause you're different, babe. You're interesting and somehow aren't easily swayed by me, which makes you a challenge. Ugh, this douchebag made me want to vomit. He could expose me all he wants, but I'd never ever go near him again. I shoved past him to leave, but suddenly he grabbed my hand and tried to force me into his embrace. Get off of me, you psycho! I never meant for it to turn out like this. I just wanted to prove that data was the driving force of compatibility. But maybe I'd been wrong after all. <sighs> I decided it was time to confess all to Evelyn before Jace told her first. Only the next morning, when I arrived to pick her up as usual, her mom told me she'd already left. Hmm, was there something I didn't know about? I turned on my phone notifications, and that's when I saw it. Alicia had posted the picture of Chase grabbing me, but the angle made it look like, in Alicia's words, we were kissing. Huh? So that's why Evelyn didn't want to see me. And what would Killian think of this? I arrived at school just as Killian stepped out of his car. I rushed toward him, and when our eyes met, I could see he was hurt. Then he just turned and walked away. Without thinking, I caught up with him and I poured my heart out telling him I was the one behind the locker, how I got involved with Chase because of Evelyn, and how I lied to him when he went to the locker. But that was also how I realized I had feelings for someone. For you. Excuse me? You're the one behind the love locker? No way. Gosh, I'm so glad I got all my secrets out. In that case, we have a big problem. Evelyn then walked me along the corridor, and what I saw was pure chaos. People were crying, arguing, and even fighting, all because of the locker. One couple was having a tearful breakup, cause the locker claimed they weren't meant to be. In the other corner, two girls were fighting, cause the locker matched them to the same guy. A boy was breaking stuff out of anger, since the locker didn't match him with his crush. The entire lobby echoed the words, Love Locker. Gosh, how'd I been so oblivious to this before? I'd been so caught up with my own problems, I'd neglected the consequences of the locker I'd created. This was wrong, so wrong. I had to shut the locker down right now. I rummaged through my bag to find my MacBook, but... This was my baby, my first brainchild. I... No, I must do this. <sighs> yeah, that was the right thing to do. Technology shouldn't be used to predict one's feelings. I've learned the hard way not to mess with anyone's relationship ever again. And that love is never ever simple. You don't need a mysterious object of the spiritual world to tell you who to date. You just gotta experience it. Well, it's been three months since I shut down the infamous love locker. Now, everything is finally back to normal. And guess what? I've got a boyfriend. Yup, 
Kilian and I just went to official last week. Evelyn doesn't like Jace anymore. She vowed not to run after some good-looking pretentious jerk ever again. Instead, she's just gonna wait for the right guy to come along. About the love locker, when people realized it didn't work anymore, the speculations became rife. My personal favorite is that the spirit had found peace and left. But still, every now and then, I hear someone gossip about the haunted love locker that once turned the whole school upside down, and I can't help but feel all goose pimply. Ugh. <sighs> ah, why is he always late? I've been waiting for my boyfriend Kevin for the last half an hour. I craned my head to see if he was coming, but the only people around were a cuddling couple. I watched the guy kiss his girlfriend on the cheek, then led her over to the Porsche parked nearby. Oh wow, if only... But wait, that guy... Oh my god, it's Kevin! Thanks for the gift, babe. But wouldn't this Gucci wallet look even more perfect with a pair of Briani pants? You jerk! I shouted as I threw the cake I was holding at his shocked face. To the surprise of the new girlfriend, he immediately denied knowing me and made out I must be crazy. What? However, once the girl got in the car, he turned to me. We're done. You may have a pretty face, but you're just some poor little orphan. What? what did he just say? Poor little orphan? I trusted him. I loved him. But it turns out he was just a lying, cheating gold digger. My heart ached through this betrayal, but I still had to drag myself to work. Oh, I forgot to mention, I'm Linda. I've lived at this orphanage since I was little, and my job is to take care of the vegetable garden. Hmm, if only one day a king would appear, tell me I was the long-lost princess, then take me back to his magnificent kingdom. <sighs> I was just putting on my gloves when a nun rushed over to me. Oh no, busted. I was gonna get nagged for being late. But to my surprise, she smiled as she handed me a piece of paper. Oh my god, I can't believe it! I've been adopted! Curious, I flipped the paper and checked my adopter's information. Huh? Their year of birth was only 2000? I was eager to read more, but the nun took the paper back. I must have misread it. No way my adopter is barely older than me. The nun pointed to the gate. A Mercedes was there with a bodyguard in black. Next to him was a woman wearing a long skirt, a mask, and sunglasses. Is that the person who adopted me? Am I finally going to be a rich mistress living in the big castle with my millionaire parents? Well, yep. I'm now sitting in this expensive car with my adoptive mother. I was so excited. But the whole ride, she didn't say a word. And this weirdness continued until we stopped in front of this incredible mansion. As soon as we entered the place, a maid hurried over and bowed to us. Only then did my foster mother turn to me, take off her sunglasses and say, Hi Martha, welcome to your new home, my daughter. Oh, she sounds so young. So she must really be born in 2000. But this girl who's just my sister's age just called me daughter? That's so weird. This definitely would take some getting used to. Then mom told the chauffeur to start the car as it was time for my makeover. Wow, another car? Huh? Isn't that a limousine? This was insane! And boom, here I am at a luxury beauty salon. I didn't know what half of these shimmering, expensive-looking products were. I let the beautician do her thing and boom again. When I opened my eyes, a stranger stared back at me. Wow, with his curly blonde hair and layers of makeup, I looked at least five years older. Oh man, goodbye my cool blue streaks. Before I could complain, my new mom handed me an outfit. Wait, wait, what is this? This dress is super tight and short. I feel like an Egyptian mummy in it. As for these high heels, ugh, how could anyone walk straight in these things? But seeing my mother's satisfied eyes, I tried to force a smile. I'm a noble lady now, and this is just how we dress, right? Finally, dinner time. I used to think that places like this only existed on TV. Oh, look at these numbers. One meal here costs more than our monthly expenses at the orphanage. Wow, it didn't take long until the waiter brought out these fancy-looking dishes. But mom's still wearing a mask? I was about to ask when she ordered a portion to go, then told me to just eat and she would wait for me. Why though? This was so awkward. Why was she so insistent on keeping her mask? But that's not the only strange thing. Today, I returned to school. Still the same old school, but mom insisted this muscular bodyguard accompanied me everywhere. 
I couldn't even go to the restroom in peace as he stood guard outside. It's great I've been adopted and all, but I can't carry on being controlled like this. It's so embarrassing. I have to negotiate with mom. So I made her some squash soup to break the ice. I knocked on her door a few times, but no response. So I opened it, intending to leave the bowl on her table when suddenly someone held my wrist. It was mom. She looked at me with scary eyes. How dare you enter my room without permission? Where are your manners? I made some soup for you and... I forbid you from entering my room again. I will not repeat myself on this. Okay, geez. Why was she so sensitive about it? I wonder what she was hiding there. So, that was a failure and I still have this living statue following me everywhere. It's lunchtime, yet thanks to him, no one would ever sit with me. I needed to escape him before his presence suffocated me. What should I do? Finally, after overhearing some students mention that the vending machine had run out of orange juice, I immediately asked the bodyguard to get some for me. Ha! <laughs> I'm sure he won't find any even if he dug up this whole school. <laughs> Success! <laughs> How great it is not being supervised by that giant rock of a guard! I was in the field joyfully chatting with two of my friends, but I didn't even get to finish my story before the bodyguard showed up again. Great, now you've scared my friends off. There he goes again, being all silent and still. Ugh, this was so annoying. I need to set up a date to apologize to my friends about that incident. And of course, we have to finish the gossip we were talking about. <sighs> but how could I possibly avoid my bodyguard? Aha! I just sneaked out of the kitchen's back door, and there's only this fence left between me and freedom. Oh no, the stupid alert system! The bodyguard was rushing toward me, but thankfully, I made it through. <laughs> but then... Oh snap. Before I could process what was going on, mom was glaring at me and gave the guard an order. Take her back to her room! Immediately! As soon as I was tossed back into my room, mom started yelling. What is this rag you're wearing? Maids, throw this ghastly clothes away at once. From now on, you'll only wear what I allow you to. And you must not go outside without my permission. Is that clear? Then she slammed the door shut. What? Why was she being so unreasonable? I couldn't live like this. I needed to talk to her. I barged into her room but didn't see her anywhere. I took a look around and noticed a picture of a girl. but. Why does she look exactly like me? Who is this person? What's happening here? Mom angrily sprinted towards me and grabbed the photo frame. I tried to take it back and as we were pulling about, I quickly took a chance and snatched her mask. Surprisingly, her wig also came off. Oh my god, Martha looks exactly like me! Except there's a mark on the side of her face. Martha, what's going on? It took a while for her to calm down and tell me everything. Turns out she was due to marry her dream man, but then she was diagnosed with hypochromia, a condition that affects red blood cells and can result in skin pigmentation. She worried if her fiancé found out, he would cancel the wedding. Then she found a picture of me that my orphanage posted on their fan page. Stunned by how similar we looked, she came up with the idea of asking me to replace her on her big day. What? How dare she use me like a tool? I was about to leave, but then she got on her knees and started sobbing. Please help me. I must marry him. Then you can go home. I, I have lots of money. You can have as much as you want. Please, this marriage is everything to me. I'm truly in love with him. Ugh, Martha looks so pathetic. I couldn't leave her alone miserable like this, so I agreed to help her. She then shared her Instagram account with me so I could contact her fiancé. So, I went on a first date with this man called Elias, wearing a Bluetooth headset connected to Martha's. Five minutes had passed and he hadn't noticed I was a fake. That was a little strange, huh? Uh, is there something on my face? Why are you staring at me like that? Oh, sorry, it's just you look even more appetizing than this beefsteak. <laughs> and you're far prettier than the last time we met, Maddie. Every time I set eyes on you, I feel myself blossoming. Ugh, I know, it was a cheese fest. But hey, I was just doing my part here. Then suddenly, Elias sighed and gave me this sad look. My dad is seriously ill and is in the hospital. Right now, we're in a very difficult financial situation. 
At this rate, I don't know if the wedding will go as planned. So it would be great if you could help me. Yes, yes, of course. I will help you. Don't worry. Oh boy, what a simp Martha is. As soon as I delivered the line, Elias immediately got up and said he must go to the hospital to take care of his dad, leaving the bill to me. Hmm, something about all this seems fishy to me. The next day, I waited for Elias at a cafe. He was late and rushed in, looking all flustered. Honey, did you wait long? You have the money, don't you? I gave Elias the bank card and a small gift box. I wanted to cheer you up, so here's a little something extra. Yeah, Martha had begged me to deliver this gift box to him by hand, saying that his family situation must have stressed him out tons, so she wanted to comfort him. <sighs> what a rich people thing to do. Oh, a Rolex! Pumpkin, thank you. This watch will surely go well with a Valentino shirt. What a pity I don't have one yet. <sighs> Wait, I think I'd heard this somewhere before. Oh my god, he sounded exactly like that douchebag Kevin. Was he just using Martha for her money? I decided to pry further and find out. Is your dad better? I would like to visit him. Which hospital is he in? Elias looked confused. He fidgeted with his watch, unable to meet my gaze. Uh, um, my dad's fine. You really don't need to visit him. So you don't have to worry about the hospital bills anymore, right? Oh, no, no, no. I haven't paid his bills yet. I can't... <laughs> I'm just kidding. Of course, it's yours. <laughs> Now I'm sure he's no different than my gold-digging ex. I couldn't let this guy continue to take advantage of Martha. I went home and told her right away, but she refused to believe me. Stop talking nonsense. Now, take this cake to him at once. He must be so exhausted after looking after his sick dad. This would be a sweet surprise for him. I struggled to carry the huge cake to Elias's house. Then I saw him standing there arguing with another girl. I should have broken up with you a long time ago. My fiancé is much richer than you. I'm begging you, please, change your mind. The girl cried and pulled Elias's hand, but he just swung his arm and got into the car. Ugh, that jerk Elias. He's treating these girls as hard like they're his playthings. I have to stop this. The big day has come already, but before walking down that aisle, I need to get one thing done first. What do you think about this look, huh? I took a selfie and sent it to Elias to see his reaction. Right at that moment, Martha rushed into the room. What on earth do you think you're doing? Just leave it alone and we'll have a great show for you to see. Suddenly, I received a message from Elias. Darling, you're as beautiful on the inside as you are on the outside. The love I feel for you is indescribable and I can't wait to call you my wife. Wow, give this guy an Oscar. See? <laughs> Oh, really? Then let me show you something even more interesting. Right at that moment, I received another text. Okay, that's my cue to act. I signaled Martha to stay quiet and dragged her over to the window. We took a peek outside and that's when someone appeared. As I walked up the aisle, I heard gasps from everyone. Geez, had they never seen a pigmentation mark before? But Elias gently smiled at me. Well, let's see how long he can keep up the act. It was my turn to read the oath when Martha furiously barged in. Elias, you're a liar! The wedding's off! What? Wait, Martha? But why are there two of you? The whole crowd was in an uproar. Drop the act! I already know you're only marrying me for my money. Money you plan on granting to another girl! No, Maddie, I love you! Right at that moment, a girl stepped out of the crowd. Pfft, you truly believe I'd ever get back with you? Not in your dreams. All eyes stopped on the pathetic, panic-stricken Elias. Ha! <laughs> Take that, you lying gold digger. Oh, the girl looks familiar, right? She's Ruby, Elias's ex. On that day, I followed Ruby and told her everything about Elias' gold digger ways. Then, we came up with a plan to expose him. Ruby would come to the wedding and beg for him back. And as expected, after seeing a picture of me with a flawed face, he immediately agreed to get back with Ruby. And of course, I purposefully let Martha overhear the conversation. Brilliant! Now, Elias is currently being removed by Martha's bodyguards. <laughs> Serves him right. So, what happened next? Well, Martha told me about her past. Her parents both passed away and left her a huge fortune. She may have had wealth, but she was lonely, which is why she acted impulsively around Elias. We both learned that love is precious, and it's also worth the wait for someone who loves us unconditionally. 
Martha let me stay here in her mansion, and we've actually become really close. It turns out we both have found something way better than fake love from slimy gold diggers. And that's sisterly love.